Good morning. I was going to say, Stephen, you're definitely not as good a bletherer as I am. I'm sure you'll agree. Um, it's lovely to see you all this morning. Uh, it's lovely to see you all this morning. Um, yeah, Stephen, so we're going to have communion la later. Um, I'm sure you'll know the drill by now. We're going to light, uh, with the lovely Deb Debbie McGee, my assistant, our third... Oh, you remember Paul Daniels? Uh, our yeah, third advent candle. <laughs> And while Stephen's doing that, I did want to say a very warm welcome to you as well at home, wherever you're watching us by YouTube. So let's say this prayer. Here we go. Together. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. A light to darkness can quench. And our first worship video this morning is Noel. Love incarnate, love divine Star and angels gave the sign Bow to babe on bended knee The saviour of humanity Unto us a child is born He shall reign forevermore No
So let's bring our confession before Almighty God this morning. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. And the collect for today. Faithful Lord, whose steadfast love never ceases, and whose mercies never come to an end, grant us the grace to trust you, and to receive the gifts of your love new every morning. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now a Bible reading. The reading is taken from Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 to 6 and 16 to 17. A record of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. <coughs> Abraham was the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram. Ram the father of Aminabah, and Aminadab the father of Nation, Nation the father of Salmon. <coughs> Salmon the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife, and Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was the Jesus, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Thus, there were 14 gener generations in all, from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile to Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well done, Kath, with all those names. Well, I, I never thought this day would happen when I would be in church with Rob, and we would be wearing robes together, and he would have the right colour on, and I would have the wrong colour on. <laughs> the, the apprentice has become the master. Glad this is being recorded. <laughs> May we bow our heads in prayer. Gracious God, we pray that you may speak to us as we gather here. Speak through your word. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, as part of the first lockdown, I'm sure you've got up to all sorts of things. In my family, my brother Derek started getting interested in our family history. A fair number of emails started flying around, my, my, my siblings and my sister Anne, being the fount of all knowledge in our family, uh, was very much in control of things. The best email was from my brother Roger. He can be notoriously bad about communicating. He'd maintained a deep silence whilst all the emails were pinging back and forth. And then suddenly he burst into life, pointing out with glee that brother Derek had got the date of his own marriage wrong. <laughs> Family history is incredibly popular. And I know the BBC's Who Do You Think You Are is a favourite with many. Well, today's Bible reading from the beginning of Matthew is about your family history. But becoming a Christian means that we are adopted into God's family. 
And Matthew, at the start of his gospel, traces the family tree from Abraham to Jesus. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, Stephen, that's very nice, but actually I'm not really interested in family history. Or, I am interested, but this is really a bit too remote. Well, don't give up, because Matthew is not really that concerned with people who love family history. He has a different purpose, and I want to look at three key messages for each one of us. The first two I'll just be looking at briefly. It's the third I want to focus on. First of all, Matthew tells us that this family tree from Abraham to Jesus spans 42 generations. It reminds us that God may take his time, but he does keep his word. And his word to Abraham was that all the peoples of the earth would be blessed through his descendants. Well, many, many centuries had passed since that promise to Abraham. But now a young woman from Nazareth sings that God has remembered to be merciful to Abraham, just as he promised to our ancestors. Though there were long periods when it seemed like God had forgotten, he had not. God may appear to us to be slow, but he never, never forgets his promises. And we see that time and time again in the Bible. God made great promises to Joseph and to David. In both their lives, for many years, there was nothing but tragedy after tragedy. And it seemed as though nothing, nothing good was going to happen. But God's promises always come true. And as Tim Keller put it, they always burst the banks of what you imagine. And it may seem to us oh so long ago that Jesus spoke of his second coming. But we can be sure that he will keep his promise. He will return. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. Secondly, at the end of our reading, we had a rather strange summary of the family tree. We're told there were 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 generations from David to the exile, and 14 from the exile to the Messiah. 42 in all, six lots of seven. The Bible has a lot of sevens in it, starting with the seven days of creation. The seventh day in the Ten Commandments was, became the day of rest. It became a symbol of the final rest God's people were going to enjoy, a rest from all weariness and burdens, a rest when God would renew the earth. And Matthew is pointing out that this rest will come to us through Jesus. We've had six sevens of generations, now we begin the seventh with the birth of Jesus. He is the one who brings us rest. He is the one who secures your place and my place in God's new kingdom. The one who gives us a foretaste of heaven. Now the third thing that Matthew says about this family tree, or says through this family tree, is the one I want to concentrate on. I think a lot of us wonder whether we're significant. Do we really matter to God? Do we have a part to play, or indeed whether we've already messed up our part, and that actually we're useless, we don't really have any part to play at all. I guess when I talked earlier about God's promises always coming true, perhaps there were some of you feeling, oh, but Stephen, you don't know me. You don't know my past. I've messed up big time. I've blown any chance of God's promises coming true for me. Well, Matthew has something to say to you because his family tree is full of surprises. At the time when Matthew wrote, Family trees really mattered. It was part of your pedigree. You wanted it to look good. Your family tree said, 
this is who I am. King Herod the Great was so concerned about his family tree that he purged many of the names from his public genealogy because he didn't want anyone to know that those people were related to him. I don't know about you, I don't know if your family tree has any black sheep in it, people who are hidden away and never mentioned. I remember growing up and there were occasionally whispers in the family about whether someone had been a bigamist. But Matthew seems to delight in the black sheep. He brings out into the open what might be considered some rather painful memories in Jesus' family tree. And they're all the more surprising in that they're to do with women. In Matthew's patriarchal society, women were hardly ever mentioned in such lists, let alone five of them. Matthew points out clearly the importance of women, which of course every Christmas underlines in that Mary was the mother of the Son of God. But let's look at some of the women mentioned in the family tree. First, there's Tamar. Tamar's is not a happy story. Judah, the son of Jacob, the great-grandson of Abraham, treated Tamar badly. She had married uh, Judah's eldest boy, Ur. But Ur had been a wicked man and been put to death. And so Judah had responsibilities to look after Tamar, his daughter-in-law. But he and his family didn't do what they should to help her. And Tamar became desperate and disguised herself and tricked Judah into sleeping with her. An act of incest, strictly against God's law. It led to twins being born. What a mess, you may think. Surely God is going to give up any idea of the promised line coming down through Judah. But no. Here we have it in black and white in Matthew's Gospel, Judah, the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. The promised line came through Tamar. There may have been dreadful sin in your past, but it doesn't mean that you are cut out of God's family. It does not mean that you cannot be used by God. That you cannot have spiritual children and bring other people into God's family. The next woman is Rahab, a Canaanite woman. Again, doesn't look very promising because God told Joshua to wipe out all the Canaanites. And you may think, well, God's not going to include any Canaanites in the promised line. We also discovered that Rahab was a prostitute. And yet she came to faith, and Rahab was the mother of Boaz, who was King David's great-grandfather. And King David, well, he would have made the best ever Who Do You Think You Are program. <laughs> For we learn that David's great-grandmother was Ruth. Now you may say, surely Ruth was a real sweetie. So caring for her mother-in-law, Naomi. So willing to take up even a new faith. So surely everyone would be proud to have a Ruth in the family tree. But not so. Ruth was a Moabite. Moabites in the Bible were strictly forbidden to enter the assembly of the Lord. They could not be. They could not be part of God's people. This was God's judgment on them because of the way the Moabites had treated God's people during the wilderness period. And yet the grace of God is mightier than the law. You may feel that you have all sorts of things that disqualify you from being a part of God's plans and God's purposes. You may feel you're definitely not the right sort of person. I can only say that you are underestimating the grace of God. Ruth became the great-grandmother of King David, and we still haven't finished with David. In many, way, in many ways, David had all the right credentials to be part of uh, God's promised line. 
After all, he was a man, not a woman. He was a Jew, not a Gentile. He was royalty, not poor. Yet even David can only be included by the grace of God. Because David's evil deeds were worse than anything done by women in this family tree. For we read, David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. If you ever feel that you're too bad a person, that you've fallen too far to be rescued by God, that you couldn't possibly be included in his plans, then familiarise yourself with the story of David and Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. It's a story of sin brought about by David leading himself into temptations. In many ways, he was without excuse. At first, he commits adultery. And then, in a cover-up attempt, he arranges for the murder of Uriah, who has been a close and loyal friend. And yet, here, in Matthew's words, we have Jesus the son of David. In Jesus Christ, prostitute and king, male and female, Jew and Gentile, one race and another race, moral and immoral, all sit down as equals, equally sinful and lost, equally accepted and loved. As it says in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 11, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. The way the world pigeonholes or discriminates against certain people must not be brought inside the church. The things that the world values, pedigree, money, reputation, race, class, all those matter not. Jesus is not ashamed to call you and me brothers and sisters. And it seems to me this next hymn ties in well with that amazing news. And can it be? Should 
Will you stand with me? And let's declare our faith in our amazing, graceful God together. Let us affirm our faith in God. We believe and trust in God the Father, who made the world. We believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind. We believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Take a seat as Chris is going to bring us our present intercession. Amazing love, how sweet the sound. I'm proud of my ancestry as well, uh, Stephen. I come from a long line of very rough people. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know, my surname is Chris Ruff, by the way. <laughs> Noel, Noel, come and see what God has done. Let's pray and give him thanks. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways, reclothe us in your rightful mind, in purer lives our service find. In deeper reverence praise, in deeper reverence praise. Drop your still dews of quietness till all our strivings cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress and let your, our ordered lives confess the beauty of your peace, the beauty of your peace. Having lit our third Advent candle today, which should excite us to the arrival of our coming Saviour, let us, A, awaken our spirit to not only yearly, but daily praise and magnify his holy name. D. Decide now and always to put him first in our daily lives, in our thoughts, words and deeds, at our rising and at our sleeping. V. Value each precious moment of every day our Lord has given us. Continue to help us, dear Lord, through these challenging days. E. Enter into his holy presence with thanksgiving and praise. N. New every morning are your mercies. They never come to an end. And T. Thank you for Advent that reminds us that you came to earth as a baby and you are coming again as triumphant king. Heavenly Father, you sent your messengers to tell of the birth of your Son, that people might believe in him. Open our ears to your call to repent of our sins and to seek our heavenly inheritance. May we profess Christ until we stand by his grace before the glory of your majesty. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for our unique Homer Parish community. We pray for all aspects of life in our area, local businesses, schools, care homes, pubs and clubs, leisure centres, play parks, housing estates and community groups. We pray for strength to carry on during these uncertain times. And please draw alongside all those who are struggling, be it financially, physically, or spiritually. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We again bring to you, Lord, the situation of both the COVID pandemic and Brexit negotiations. Thank you that the vaccine rollout has begun, and we pray for its success over the coming weeks and months. Give your strength and courage to those in authority as the Brexit transition comes to a decisive conclusion. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. 
And Lord, I thank you that you know our very thoughts. You know our prayers even before we speak them. For it is written, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I set you apart. Please give us the strength and peace of mind to know that you do indeed have the whole world, including me, in your hands. In your mercy, Lord. Amen. And can we gather our prayers together? In the words the Lord gave to us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Chris. So we're about to take communion, but before we do, we're going to share the peace together. Um, just remember, obviously, the appropriate social distancing, no hugging or, or dancing together, at, <laughs> although you can with me. Um, maybe not. I think the, um, yeah, the uh, sign language, so a wave or whatever you want, well, the sign language, I think, is peace be with you. Peace be with you. So let's stand, shall we? <laughs> We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of the peace.
So I want to thank you for joining us this morning, all you folks here. It's been lovely sharing communion with you, uh, and also you folks who have tuned in at home via YouTube. Thanks ever so much for joining us. It's been great having you with us. I do want to wish you all a very blessed week. Do please stay safe, folks. Uh, but do have a good week, uh, I wish you. Above all things, I do pray that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, that it will keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the, in the name, name of Christ. Of Christ. Amen. Amen.